not going to have too many more videos starting right here on this balcony. But anyway, today's a numbers kind of day. Uh, we're talking about math. We're talking about numbers. So if you don't like the math and numbers, you don't have to skip it. You can skip ahead because we'll have some raids coming up at the end of the video. But to start, we're talking about something called breakpoints in Pokemon Go. I've talked a lot about how the damage formula rounds aggressively. So instead of seeing a smooth increase in damage, what you see are actually jumps at certain levels. So maybe at level 25, your quick attacks damage will increase. At level 30, it'll increase again. At level 35, it'll increase again, instead of just a smooth increase. So what that means is for certain Pokemon, their damage will actually max out below the Pokemon's maximum level against a given enemy, say a raid boss. And what that means for you in a practical sense is that you don't actually have to max out certain Pokemon in order to maximize their damage against certain enemies. So with that said, let's just jump into the numbers. And I'm glad someone finally took the time to do the math on it because I really haven't had time lately to do any kind of calculations on this level. So what we have here are some spreadsheets. One is by Redditor VLFPH for raid cutoff damage against legendary raid bosses and regular raid bosses. So you can see where you need to power up your Pokemon to maximize their damage against raid bosses without actually having to invest all the Stardust and Candy to completely max them out. And then we have another spreadsheet by a Redditor named Zombie... Mm, Zombie Reagan? With lots of numbers in there. And that one does the same thing, but against regular Pokemon. So you can figure out where you need to max up your counters to uh, certain gym meta Pokemon. So your Machamps for fighting those Blissies and Snorlaxes and gyms. I'm going to focus more on the Raid Boss spreadsheet, but I will talk a little bit about the other one because it gives a little bit more information. It tells you about defensive breakpoints also, so good information there. And then I also have a link to a Reddit thread in the description that just gives you breakpoints for common raid boss counters charge attacks. So if you want to just see really quickly what level your Pokemon needs to be powered up to to maximize its damage based on its IVs, hit that link in the description and then we'll talk about that one a little bit later also. So starting with the raid boss spreadsheet by VLFPH, this is what it looks like. It's actually really simple. So all you have to do is choose your attacker. We're going to go with Golem. Uh, choose the move that you're using. We're using Rock Throw. Choose the Pokemon you're battling against, the Raid Boss. We're looking at Moltres because that's what's hot right now. And it's a level 5 raid. So what you see here is a breakdown of how much damage Golem's Rock Throw is going to deal based on its level and its IVs. So the columns across the top are its IVs. So you have starting with a 0 attack IV all the way up to a 15 attack IV. And then you have its level starting from 20 and then all the way to max, which is actually 39 because you can't power up past that for whatever reason. Niantic decided 39 is the cap and not 40. So a golem, assuming a golem has a perfect 15 attack IV, it's going to max out its rock throw damage at level 31.5. Beyond that, you see right here, it's always going to deal 16 damage per rock throw, no matter what, even if you continue to power it up. So level 31.5 is where a 15 attack IV golem will actually max out its damage with rock throw. Now, you can also look at its charge moves, so let's say Stone Edge, and you'll see at 31.5 it's going to be dealing 126 damage with Stone Edge. If you continue to power it up, you can get it all the way to 133 damage by maxing it out. But let's do the math real quick. Just throw it right here so you can see it on screen. 133 divided by 126. You're looking at a 5% increase in its damage by maxing it out. And that's going to cost you hundreds of thousands of Stardust and a lot of candy. Is it worth it for the 5% increase when you could just max out at 31.5 with your rock throw damage? That's up to you to decide, but it gives you a very good idea of where these breakpoints are for your Pokemon. Now remember, powering it up will also increase its HP, its defense, so it will survive a little bit longer, but again, that's not going to be much more than a 5% increase like we're seeing here with its uh, charge move damage. But if we jump over to the other spreadsheet, also linked in the description, you can choose your Pokemon, you can choose its attacks, and then you can input stats for the Pokemon that you're battling against and get some defensive breakpoints. So we're just going to go with the default here. We're not going to look at any specific Pokemon, but I'm just going to scroll down and show you how this looks. So you have damage taken right here. 
Again, it works the same way. You have the Pokemon's level and the Pokemon's defense IV. So here we go. A 15 defense IV Golem will take, in this theoretical situation, from a Pokemon with 100 base attack power, we're looking at 66 damage at level 40. Well, all right, 39. 66 damage at level 39, maxed out. And if you get it to 31, 31 and a half, you're taking 70 damage. So an increase of four damage. So if you were to max out that golem, you would take four less damage per charge attack. And then if you look at the other side right here, you have what golem's HP is gonna be at each of its levels based on its IVs. So with 15 perfect HP IVs, at level 31, your golem's gonna have 129 HP, and maxed out, it's gonna have 137 HP. So it's gonna gain eight HP and take four less damage per charge attack with 100 base power based on these calculations. That's not really a huge difference. So really what we're looking at here is you don't need to completely max out your golem. It's not gonna be that much more efficient. It's quick attack damage isn't gonna increase. So you, you have to play around with the numbers on this spreadsheet and you do have to enter these manually for the Pokemon that you're going up against. But at the very least, it gives you an idea of how little the damage is actually going to change as you continue to power up that Pokemon beyond wherever its final breakpoint is for its quick attack. So what I'm going to do now is look at a couple of my Pokemon as real-world examples. So this is the Golem that I have powered up the most right now. Its, uh, it's HP is its best stat, so it's got a 15 in HP. I'm going to run it through Poke Assistant real quick. The way Poke Assistant's calculations, it's either a 10 or 11 attack IV. Unfortunately, it's not more accurate than that. So if I take a look at Rock Throw with a 10 or 11 IV, the breakpoint, assuming it's 10, worst case, to get to 16, the maximum possible damage, it needs to be level 34.5. I haven't powered this up since I hit level 35, so that means it's it's already there. I don't need to power up this golem any further to really increase its rock throw damage. It is going to gain more HP, a little bit more damage on Stone Edge, but at this point, this golem can stay right here. Now my other golem, my perfect IV golem, we're looking at 15, and that's 31.5. I stopped at level 30 with this one, so I'm going to give it three more power-ups to hit level 31.5. And then I'll be done with that. And I'll leave it right there. So that's it. That golem's not going to deal any more damage to a raid boss Moltres with Rock Throw. Let's take a look at uh, the Jolteon that I use for raids. It has a 15 for attack based on its appraisal. So I'm going to go Jolteon, Thundershock, and against Moltres, it needs to be level 34.5. By the way, if you don't know how Pokemon levels work, I'll put a link in the description to this uh, Game Press page that has the level based on the candy and Stardust cost. So you can see for level 34.5, you're looking at a 7,000 Stardust power-up cost. This Jolteon is already 8,000, meaning it's above level 34.5. It's probably level 35. So this one already has its damage maxed out against Moltres. Let's see about Lugia. Oh, okay. So we want to go all the way to level 37 to max out its damage against a Lugia. Unfortunately, I'm level 35. Your Pokemon's maximum level is your trainer level plus 1.5, so I can really only get to 36.5 right now. So until I hit level 36, I won't need to power this up because its damage isn't gonna increase against Lugia. And then finally, I wanna look at this Silph Road thread by Psyducky that basically gives you that information just kind of already ready for a lot of the popular counters and popular raid bosses so that you don't actually have to do the calculations each time. So if you're going up against a raid boss Moltres and you're using some of the popular counters like Golem, this is gonna list all that information from the spreadsheet, but here you go, I'll break it down. So what you see here is for the move Rock Throw, the breakpoint at level 20 is uh, with a 13 attack IV, you're gonna increase to 13 damage. There's a breakpoint at 20.5 for IV 11, breakpoint at 23.5 for IV 13, so really just look for what IV your Pokemon has. Like I said, my Golem is a 15, and we saw from that spreadsheet, the breakpoint is level 31.5, at which point it goes up to 16 damage and maxes out there. So again, it's up to you whether or not you want to stop at the final breakpoint, if you want to cut it short early. Uh, it just depends on which Pokemon you have, how much Stardust you have to spend, how many candies you have to use. But 
these charts, these spreadsheets will all give you a good idea of where your damage is going to max out, at least for your quick attack, and that's usually a good place to look and decide if you want to stop there or continue on. But for now, hopefully that makes sense. I think I did a pretty good job of explaining how it all works. I know there's going to be a ton of links in the description on this video, um, but I would say the most useful ones to definitely start with are this Reddit thread. That just has quick reference for all the counters for the raid bosses. And then this damage calc spreadsheet, because that one's going to give you more in-depth detail. You can tailor it to your specific Pokemon. You can figure out Pokemon that aren't necessarily the top tier counters if you want to use your Gyarados or Alakazam or whatever against something. You can throw that in here and see where those breakpoints are going to be against a raid boss. So again, huge shout out to everyone who did the math for all these spreadsheets and threads. They're all linked in the description. But for now, there's a Moltres raid right down the street. Should we go? Let's go. Here we are. Yeah, heal up, both of you for sure. It's, uh, it's just the three of us right now, but people have been two-manning and three-manning Moltres, and I know we're not the highest level group, but, oh, I went in, by the way. But I just want to see. I'm curious. I want to see how much damage we can do. We're not gonna, we're not gonna beat this. I know that. I want to see how close we can get, and then I'll see if anyone else is around to come help out. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. All right, so there it goes. The three of us, not even maxed out, not even the best counters. We did all right, but we are gonna need some help. I think they might have thought that was food. Oh my God, they hit so close. Look at the other chickens too. We got a bit of a group, more than enough people to take the Moltres down. We've got about seven minutes left, so we're gonna hop in. Here we go, Moltres number three for me, I think. Let's see if I can get better IVs out of this one, or even a catch, right? It's definitely gonna use its charge attacks more often now that we have more people attacking. Here comes another one. Notice that change in the rhythm, and then I get the lag death, all right. Oh, we're so good on this. Halfway, only like 70 seconds in. Got it. Oh, what? I took the reduced damage, and then I took full damage. What happened there? Nope, nope, nope. Give me some health back. That was a lag death. I guess that's the way it's gonna be out here. I took, I took double damage again. What is that? That's like a new glitch. Anyway, it's going down. All right, nice job. Good luck, everyone. Ten revives, six rare candies. That's it. I'll take it. Five, six, seven balls. All right, we got seven. How many did you get? Seven. I got ten balls. All right, we got it. Eighteen twenty-three. It's not. It's not better than uh, any of my other Moltres. Dick. Um, it was low, and after attack, I threw it, and it attacked again. Uh, Caught it. First throw. All right, I need your help. I'm having really good luck with these Moltres. So this yes. one's uh, it's probably right around 80 percent, 82, 84 maybe. All right, dude, let's see if I can carry that luck over to yours. Okay. Oh, no, the question, question, the question is, <laughs> did we catch it? Oh, did we catch it? Oh, Everyone's got lagging. This. Look at did this. Everybody lagged. Oh, this? my God. Everyone. Ah. Everyone. <laughs> Every, yeah, yours, too. Hey. Oh, mine's just flying around. Oh, mine's still going. <laughs> I have a chance. Oh, oh my God. God. Mine won't even find <laughs> uh, oh, it. I got it. What does that what? mean? Go back in. Oh, you should be able to go back in. Oh, it has a minute left. has a minute. Oh, my God. Okay. What is It had a minute left. Great Thank goodness. Uh -oh. oh no! Yes! Mine was 18. Well, I got my. Oh. And now it's 18, 16. Second it changed? Oh it shoot. It changed. Like what? You just jumped yes. back in. Oh. Okay. It'll go oh. back Did yours change? 
Um, only by two, I think. But it did oh, change. Yeah, it was 1818. Yeah, that's mine. Okay. Mine was 1851. And it changed so a couple people just errored out because of the lag, and when they went back in, the CP changed. So the IVs changed, the moves probably changed. But it seems like that only happens when you actually error out. You can't just run or force close your game and come back in. I'm pretty sure. Should have tried. Oh no! 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 Look no. at that! Done! No. Oh! 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 oh, oh. oh. Yes! yes. yes. <laughs> oh my god! Buzzer beater! Please, please, Moltres, let me oh. catch you! I know! <laughs> this is just oh, so I'm intense! Not it's so intense! It's just... We have one ball left. You did it! And it wasn't it. a great throw! I know! Yes! Nice! Chance finally got it! Alright! It got Spire Spin Heat Wave. I'm gonna check How'd everyone else do? Mine ran after changing CP. Uh, but caught it first. You caught it. You still aired? Yeah. No you dice for me. No. But he did. Alright, alright. Oh, yeah. All right. No, I didn't get it. Uh, alright, Nick. Still working on it. But I still got working on it. <laughs> That's all I needed. I got a fast team. So nice. Oh. There you go. Is that your first one? First one. Right on. Thank you. That's pretty good. I, I'd say what, like three, maybe four <laughs> out of five uh, yeah, haven't yeah. caught it yet. So let me just close this one out by saying thank you again to everyone who showed up to the raid to help. Um, I really appreciate it. Chance really appreciates it. And make sure you go check out those breakpoints because they can give you a pretty good idea of where you can stop powering Pokemon up to waste excess stardust. Now it's actually my last day in Hawaii today when I'm filming this, so I might not have a video coming up tomorrow, depending on what I end up doing today. It's a travel day. We'll see.